<sighs> Making a video about changing brands and then putting it on the internet. Hmm. What a bad idea. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Styles Harris, and in this video today, I wanted to give you an inside look at my new radio over here. It's the Sanwa M17. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get a brief overview because I actually haven't used it yet. So it's fresh out of the box. We're going to jump in. I'll show you some of the physical features and adjustments that you can make and what the menu system looks like and a few things that I found and just want to share that stuff with you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I want to go over some of the physical things that you can do with the radio and change the ergonomics to your liking because it comes with a lot of extra parts in the box to do so. So first up, we're going to have the most obvious pieces that come in the box. It has three extra grip pieces. Installed is going to be the medium grip. Then you have this one is technically the small grip. And then this is the large style grip. So if you don't like the way that it feels right out of the box like so, you can change it and see if it, you like one of these more. Once you got your grip dialed in, you can actually see if there's something you want to do differently with the radio wheel. This can be one of three positions. It can be in a position where it's tilted a little bit more forward like so, in the center, which is default out of the box, and then you can have one where it's tilted back here. And you have to just use a combination of these parts and this little bag here, follow the instructions, and then you can go ahead and make that adjustment. Aside from the ergonomics, you can also change the position of your trigger. This can be further back, further forward, and possibly a few other combinations with some pieces that come in the box to dial in exactly how you like that trigger to feel. I think it feels pretty good right out of the box, so I've opted to leave it in its default position. Now, this isn't something proprietary to this radio by any means, but you can also change the spring feel of the wheel and trigger with these little set screws, one right there and one right here. If that doesn't dial it in enough to your liking, if you wanna loosen it or tighten up the feel, they actually give you a collection of springs that you can use on the steering wheel and the trigger. I think that the manual describes them as being all the way from super soft to firm. Uh, you can find which one you like if you want to play around with that stuff. I just thought it was really cool that you can really get this thing to feel exactly how you want as far as the physical aspect of the radio couple other things to note on the physical side of the radio you got this nice little handle here this will come in handy when you just need to hold the radio like this if you're carrying a bunch of other stuff I know I did that all the time with the handle on my Futaba another cool thing was you can charge this with just a regular micro USB cable so if you're at the hotel room and you don't feel like busting out your charger setup so that you can balance your battery and get your radio charged for main day, you don't have to. Just right there, boom, plug it in, red LED light comes on, green when it's finished. Really cool. Another cool feature is the radio compartment has a screw on the door. And that alone <laughs> is such a neat feature. I don't know if you guys have had a bunch of radios in the past where this thing just magically falls off sometimes. Nice that it has a screw on there. Not going to happen here. Jumping into the radio, a lot of these little switches are going to be customizable. I know that you have your SW switches. You got your SW2, your SW3, and then your SW1 right here. These are all going to be customizable to pull up an adjustment according to whatever you set it to do. And we'll go ahead and jump into the insides of the radio here in just a second. 
Now, I'm not gonna give you guys a super in-depth, you must set up your radio this way, because quite frankly, a lot of the adjustments that you're going to do are going to be subject to your vehicle and also subject to your driving style, etc. So I'll give you the quick overview of how you can get to these settings, and I'll point out a few of the things that I thought were interesting along the way. Let's go ahead and jump into the radio here. Got your power button right here on the left side. I've already put my name right there. So here we are. Nice color LCD screen. And then you have this little touch panel over here that has a couple buttons that lets you navigate and make adjustments along the way. Now, this is really interesting. Not really sure why the whole screen isn't a touch screen. They probably have good reason, but we're just gonna go with what we got so far. So your default menu has some nice generalized information. You've got your time and date, temperature, which is all actually pretty handy now that I think about it. And then you have your battery indicator up there at the top, your model name right here, top left. And then let's see, you got your dual rate inputs right here. Gives you a nice visual of inputs from steering, throttle, etc. So let's go ahead and jump into the main menu. You're gonna tap this button here. And then I believe, let's go back, you can also do it by pushing this button, the trim four button. If you push down, up, it also does it. So up on trim four or here. So easily accessible menu system. So you can set up your custom menu to kind of have all of your desired adjustments when it comes to your sub trims, endpoints, etc., dual rates, yada, yada, yada. And if you tab over, it gives you even more adjustments. So before, if you go back, oh, let's go in here. Looks like I gotta go around the bend. So you can see, a lot of these are gonna be indicated as steering adjustments. They have the ST, and then these are all gonna be steering. Then you can hit this button right up here in the corner, and then it went over to the next page. Now, all of these are your throttle adjustments, and so you can set all of those there. Keep going, and then it looks like you can have a continuation of more adjustments if you wanna set them up in a custom sense, you can do so. So if you want to go in and look at those pages a little bit more in depth, go down to setting, we're gonna select that. And now you can see we are on the first page of four total pages. On the first one, it's going to be indicating these are all steering adjustments. We got the ST right up there in the center of the screen. And so you just tap and then it would drag you through all of those settings there. Now, one thing that I just wanted to point out because uh, we're no strangers to dual rate and curve and all of those types of adjustments, but one that was interesting to me, kind of had no idea what they meant by it, was this one here, a feeling setting. I had to look it up in the menu and when I did, it indicates that this can be adjusted in seven values, one S being the lowest, and 7S being the, quote, fastest. This, I believe, slows down how it, how it feels between the communication between the radio and the car. I have no idea why you would want to make it feel slow, I guess. And actually, I think the manual has a line in there where it says that, you know, warning, if it's too slow, it might not be that functional. Uh, don't do it. It's kind of what it was saying. So it says leave it at 7s for the fastest setting. I'm obviously going to leave it there. We're not going to mess with that. But if you wanted to change other things, whoop, back out of there, like your curve rate as far as, you know, you want it to be a little bit not as responsive at the beginning portion of your trigger pull and then it ramps up aggressively, you know, you could adjust something like that here but you're still gonna be getting that very true and accurate organic feeling as far as the initial immediate feedback between the radio and the car itself. All of those other adjustments are in there should you want to make it. Then you can jump over here if you wanna change your model selection. I've already put a few in there. And then you can change one if you would like to. You can go ahead and select it. 
So now obviously you'd want to change that from model number seven to whatever it is your vehicle name, whatever vehicle you're looking to change it to. So for the sake of example, this is where the touchpad gets a little tricky in my opinion. So I just wanted to show this to you guys. So we've selected it. We're going to come in here. Once you've highlighted the letter that you're going to want to change, obviously you're going to change the whole thing in this case. Now you can see one of the characters is highlighted. So now we're in this portion of the menu. Now, this is where it was kind of confusing. If you tap, 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 then you get down to the next row. I thought, oh man, that's really slow and obnoxious. But what you can actually do is you can just hold your finger on the touchpad and then swipe. And then it goes from row to row. So that's how you would navigate in there and then make all your changes. Once you've made the changes to your model name, what you need to do is go back, back again. Now the whole thing is highlighted. Switch it over to change and then do that then you change your model name. If you don't do that part where you highlight the change and then you know try to go back out to the menu, it won't do anything, you, it gets lost and you have to do it all over again. So just a quick pointer there while I was doing that earlier. And then all of your system adjustments are here. You can bind your receiver there, obviously very important. And then any custom things that you wanna do, you can do that key assignment like I was talking about, and you can change what these do, the SW2, SW3, and the SW1. You can change them all right there, pretty cool. And that's where you would change your custom list. All of these adjustments here, you can switch them around, put different ones in there, whatever you're looking to do. Very handy to get all of your quick adjustments on the fly. Um, our mode was interesting. That seems to me like you can set up these default parameters and the idea behind it as it's described in the manual is that that can be like you set up a default trim list for an on-road car and then you have an off-road car and then you have you know 10 scale, 8 scale, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you can kind of have this defaulted a certain way. If I'm wrong, let me down in the comments below, but I tried to read the instructions and understand what that was, and that seems to be what they put that there for. Um, you can change the way that it sounds and these little haptic vibrations that you get when you're making selections and adjustments. Uh, you can change the brightness of your LCD and how long it stays on at full power versus the dim mode while you're driving. Um, LED, there's actually a little blue LED on the side of the radio and it kind of defaults to this wave style thing. I think it's just kind of handy as it's an indicator that your radio is on, like if you saw it from the side on the table or something. I, I'm not really sure if it's for information about your radio or not. Um, set your clock, username, uh, big old fat factory reset if you mention mess a bunch of stuff up and have to go back to start basically but we'll just go back all the way to the main menu and that's the basics of the navigation of your Sanwall m17 a lot of super customizable adjustments and you can kind of put those adjustments in different areas to access them to make it quick and on the fly on race day which is really cool and then if you get lost go ahead and jump into that manual and then you can hopefully figure it out what you need to figure out so Hope that was helpful. One last thing before we wrap up here. The Sanwa M17 is going to come with the RX491. I believe it's a fairly new receiver that we haven't seen yet. And this thing is tiny. Um, some of you may not really care for the antenna and you like the old casing style that the other Sanwa receivers had, but this may explain why it's not contained within the receiver. Here's a Futaba R204, and it's pretty close to all the standard size receivers for the Futaba radios. Look at this thing right next to this guy here. It's like half the size. So if you don't have a whole lot of space currently with your receiver that's much like this one, 
This is going to be a welcome change because you're going to save a lot of room with this little guy. Another thing that I didn't mention was right out of the box, it comes with a screen protector. Uh, there's one for the main portion of the LCD screen. And then there's a little guy that goes over the touchpad area. So that way you don't get it all scratched up at the track when you got a little bit of dirt and all that stuff, especially at those outdoor dirt races. Really looking forward to using it at the track. Like I said, haven't used it yet. So I'll give you guys some continual updates, I'm sure, as I use it at the track, kind of on like those race days and Super Cup videos or any video that I'm at the track racing my car. If you guys are looking to get one of these radios, I went ahead and put the top link down below. BeachRC.com is going to be a place that you can currently pre-order them, I believe, at the time of the release of this video. But if you're watching this a little bit after the fact, then I'm sure that they will be readily available and in stock. So go ahead and head down there and grab one for yourself if you're looking to pick one up. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys have any questions about the radio, you can drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you but just a fair warning, I'm not a total expert on this radio. I'll do what I can. Oftentimes you might have to resort to a quick Google search to find specific answers. If you guys have any other questions about RC, tips, comments, concerns, whatever, drop them down in the comments below. Be happy to talk with you guys and be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.